difference, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here. First of all, because libraries are my favorite public institutions. If, even in case of social and economic chaos or wars and whatnot, I would like to see the libraries survive. If there's one institution that will survive, it should be the libraries guaranteeing for continuity and knowledge. But the second reason is that Denmark is my second home country. So I'm very glad to be here. The first is Finland, where I actually was the head of the or president of the Library Association some years ago. It's very good to celebrate the 20 years, I think. And, and the theme is well selective change. This, at, at the age of 20, it's time to change and think about what you want about your future. So it's very wise, and it's also in, in, in the sort of in the atmosphere of society. I think Francois Hollande, who just became the resident of France, said uh, his motto was change is now. And uh, Obama, of course, some years ago when he was elected president, said, yes, we can. Now, change is now for you, and I hope you can. So, it is a challenge to try to look at the future of libraries, and I'm very happy to hear that even if there are difficulties, even if the legal aspects are problematic, that there's a willingness to, to try to find a new solution try to find new solutions, and that you have accepted the challenge of the digital culture. This is very good. I have a very interesting starting point, because in the 80s, when the first uh, computer specialist came to Danish libraries, I did a study about the Danish Information Society, studying the libraries also, and, uh, and uh, did an evaluation of, of these changes for the Ministry of, of Finance. And it was the first time when the computer specialist entered the libraries. And it was very interesting to see how the computer specialists and the women who like books actually co-acted in the libraries in the early, early, early years. I think we have come a long way, but there's still a few things to do. I think it's a very good topic to select democracy as, as a topic of, of this uh, seminar. And, um, my first message to you is that democracy is the best ever argument for the future of libraries. It is the best argument. And when you complain that politicians are not aware, they don't understand, you want to fill the minds of the politicians, you have to become more aggressive. You have to be aggressive. The libraries are taken for granted, the threats are uh, you know, buried in a lot of technical details. You have to come out in the open, you have to be aggressive, you have to work through the media, you have to try to, to pose the threats also to those using the libraries. So that the politicians, the way to the politicians mind, there are two ways. One is the voters and the second is the media. Try both. <laughs> now, and I, I think you also should try new solutions. I, I was very impressed while uh, pres the president of the Finnish Library Association, there was a threat of closing down, down filials of libraries in, in one major Finnish city. And, and because of this threat, actually what the librarians did, they took the initiative, they arranged a seminar, they called all the political parties to a panel, and then what did they do? They enrolled a child, a retired person, and an unemployed person to tell what it meant to have the library <laughs> close by. And I think after the seminar, there was not an eye that was dry. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the libraries were not closed. So try it, it's probably worth it. But just, uh, my topic is democracy. I, I don't want to dwell on the concept of democracy. I want to say that a few words, and then I want to say that, that actually democracy, alongside with human rights, is the brand of Europe. So if you want to work with libraries on the European level, you have to use this democracy, democracy as a framework and be very concrete about what and in which ways do libraries contribute to democracy.
But, but if you want to look at the democra democracy as originally the word meant, um, uh, it comes from Greece and it actually had a very bad connotation, it was the rule of a mob and, and uh, one of the three bad forms of government. Now the concept has changed and especially in Italy, and it, in city-states in Italy, it started to mean the practice of representation. And Alexis de Tocqueville in democracy in America further refined the word. So it's a question of participation, of representation. And I think you have to also look at the challenges in modernity in terms of this representation. On the, on the one hand, we want all citizens to be active participants. On the other hand, the society is getting to be more mass, more complicated. And uh, of course, the EU is in case and point where the gap between the citizens and the, and the technocracy or the elite is very, very big. And I think that libraries could be used to bridge this gap. The EU talks all the time about this gap and how do we bridge this gap and what do we do and how do we get the citizens to understand Europe. Why not contribute? So, I, I think there's a, a lot of things to do. On the other hand, there is this problem that, that uh, politics have, and democracy have become a, a task for few persons and, and it's the political parties that mainly dominate the scene. And I, I think no progressive person ever wants democracy to consist mere, merely of being able to vote. And, and no, no one wants a society where politics is solely a business of politicians. So here is the task for libraries. And libraries can make a difference. Now, if, if you then look at this question of democracy, what I would like to sort of point out three things, three levels where libraries can do actually work. Of course, the first thing is the free access to information. This is obvious. It has always been the task of the libraries. But it's, it's not a self-evident fact anymore. It's not a self-evident fact in the whole world, and it's <coughs> with paid information, with publishers refusing to, to, uh, to give e-books to libraries, it, it's no longer uh, a self-evident fact. So there is a lot of work to do. And I think sharing of information has become easier with the new technologies. We all know this but also protection, because sharing is so easy. Therefore, also protection becomes a critical, vital issue. And as a consequence of this, uh, the fact copyright has become a new political frontier and a, and a question also for political parties. So you are on the political scene, you just have to place yourself in, in it. And I, I think, again, democracy and the risk for inequality in terms of free access to information is your main argument. We know the problems of libraries uh, having difficulty in getting digital, digital items. My personal view is that, that you have to find practical solutions. You have to negotiate, you have to get the political will, and you have to find practical solutions. <laughs> and because it's a question of money, of course money is very scarce in Europe. Everybody has to say we have a crisis. So, so it is a problem, certainly, but, but I think because it's a question of money, it's also solvable. I mean, there, is, there are resources in the society. And of course, for the libraries, it's a question of money, but there is also the political will. I, I, I think it was fantastic, this idea of, of Danish libraries being opened by a, a card and a code, not yet uh, 24 hours a day, but at least until 10. And, and if you see the sort of, should libraries be open on Sundays today? So you, if you see this idea of going with your own card and code, it's great. You just have to make sure that everybody knows how to use the card and the code. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and I, I definitely think that you should work for any information that has to be published by public support even by EU support, should be available in public libraries, at least in some public libraries. So, so there you have an argument the politicians will, will uh, accept. 
The European Commission has, a, uh, has published a digital agenda for Europe, and uh, the time for consultation is soon ending. It's on the 20th of, uh, 10th of July, and I hope that you actively participate and use your rights as EU citizens to say what you feel about this agenda. The focus is in the di digital markets, in productivity, and the aim of the agenda is to enhance digital literacy, skills, and inclusion. What would be more relevant for uh, libraries to try to have your say? And I think it's, it's also important that when you look at these EU documents, remember the public libraries, add it into the sentences so that public libraries are in, in most of the texts and it's, it's visible even when you talk about digital literacy and other things as such. So, Secondly, I would like to say that free access to information is not everything in a democracy. If you want to be uh, citizens, you, you have to also understand knowledge. And I think it's very good if you look, those of you who understand um, Danish, this is the Engineering Society of Denmark, and, and they are saying, the message down there is, is knowledge empowers. So, Wien der Stürke. So actually, knowledge does empower, and without knowledge, uh, democracy is, is empty. So, so you have to look at, at this question of knowledge and, and, and how you can empower citizens in order, in addition to the free access of information. Access to information is one thing, understanding is another. And here we see actually the challenge of the modern society. There will be always need for holistic perspectives, classifications, trying to, to provide what public libraries are at their best, their best in doing, providing citizens with not only fragmented information, but maybe a little bit broader view on where this information is to be placed. The browsers are good if you just want information, but in order to deepen your knowledge, you do need a library. And we need librarians more than ever. The ability to conceptualize, to search, to classify is, is ever more important. And we need professional work that offers clues to the customers, clues that help them to deepen their understanding, not only of practical problems of how to build a house or a cellar, but also about the way society works. And in this way, as journalists are losing their sort of informative, knowledge-producing role in society and becoming more sort of media uh, persons uh, looking for, competing for the latest news, then I, I think maybe the librarians have to take on the role of the old journalists, giving the analysis, giving the, the way to look at things. And I, I certainly think as an, as an MP in, in the European Parliament, I am very dependent on the European Library in the Parliament. I am, of course, as an old researcher, so I'm used to using information and knowledge, but still the services are very important and, and should be available as wide as, as possible. But the third thing I, I want to, third level, access to information, free is the first level. The second level is understanding what you you see, and the third thing is, is how, to, how do we build citizens? How do you create citizens in a society? And it, it's, a very, it's a very serious matter, even today. The internet helped the Arab Spring, the people to, to come to Tahrir Square to, to demonstrate in Tunisia. But you need knowledge to build a new society. If you actually overthrow the dictator, what then? What is the role of the citizens in a situation where for many, many years you have had one person making all the decisions? How do you make this transformation? Not only by weapons and not only by, by the police force and not only by elections, but actually understanding what kind of society you want to build and what kind of citizens you want to have. All these countries in the current situation of transformation are in need of, of constitutions, are in need of deeper knowledge about the, 
about the, the way societies are built. So I, I think going on the role of the libraries here is, is, is trying to be citizens and especially to focus on those parts of the citizenry that are not immediately privileged, that don't have access to internet, that don't have money to buy, buy books or, or to read papers. So actually, this question of inequality in citizenry is, is one of the main tasks for libraries. And there, I think, you can win the hearts of the politicians if you are concrete enough. So it's a critical, critical factor. The second critical factor is, is the social role of libraries as a meeting place. As a president of the Finnish Library Association, I used to talk about this. This, this question of contact in the libraries that you meet each other and, and the number of meeting places are, are fewer and fewer. And, and, and the counter argument was all, all the time. Oh, but in the library, you have to be quiet. You can't even talk. So, I mean, then you have to find new food in the libraries, cafes, whatever, so that actually there are some, some democratic forms where you actually can meet each other. I live a very lonely island in, in the northern part of Finland, and actually the only movable meeting place that there is locally is the library car, the bus. It, it comes to every place in Finland, even the most remotest site, you find the library bus. And they are still finding money, and there are still new buses being established. So, so in this sense, the idea of meeting each other is, is more and more important in a society that is becoming more and more fragmented. So, where do we stand? I think that uh, I can say to you that, that uh, I, can do, I can try to help you in the European Parliament in terms of, of finding a new role for libraries. I think you should yourself be more aggressive, trying to not only talk about the threats, but also about the solutions that, that uh, you would like to see in terms of the e-books, in terms of other things related. And, and I think you should use the, the democracy as an argument, equality, social functions. And I think there are plenty of concrete information which you can gather and then try to actually go to the politicians. There is one further argument that is important, and it's, it's that in, in Europe we see as the future, there are a lot of things that are very problematic in the future of Europe, the economic crisis, the aging of the population, the reduced uh, foreign policy impact of Europe, but, but uh, there is a hope, and that's the creative economy. We talk a lot about creative economy and, and what, is, what are the creative uh, creative branches of society. And, and I think you should try to concretize the, the contribution of, of libraries to the creative economy. So that actually, <coughs> when you look at, at the creative economy, then libraries is the thing that comes into mind. Now that when, when for example, OECD did a study on creative economy, what, what <coughs> comes into their mind is, uh, is internet and IT society, uh, what you call it, games and so forth, and maybe at best some, some uh, uh, art, artistic activities, dance, possibly photography. But, but the sort of the basic infrastructure of the creative economy has to be made visible in society. And, and libraries are, of course, one of them. Finally, somebody has said that the future of libraries lies in the past as they learn how to explore, exploit their enormous resources <coughs> digitally. This probably is true. You have so much resources, you have so much knowledge, and, and to exploit this in the di di digital culture is a challenge. And I think the European Union provides certain infrastructure also in terms of projects like the Creative Europe, Europe or the Europeana that was mentioned here. And, and they create and share intellectual and material prosperity for all that needs it. And I finally think that 
in a way, the test of the EU and, and that of the public library coincide beautifully in, in, in terms of ac actually creating a shared intellectual and, and material prosperity, and I wish both of them good luck in the future. Thank you.